Let's go through some definitions here. Um, the space is a bit small for the writing, so what we'll do is I'll kind of just write it on the side and stuff. Okay. Okay, so a quadratic relation in the form y equals a x minus h plus k um, is said to be, do you know what form that might be in? Uh, sim I, uh, no, I don't remember no. exactly. Okay, so this one's called Standard? this one's called actually vertex form. Oh. And what we'll do is we'll make a note that there's three major ones. Uh, I guess we'll write vertex in, in red now. So standard is one of them. Factored is another, and that's in order to get the factored from standard, you go through the factoring process. And this last form that we're looking at is called vertex form. So this is the focus of vertex form. And that one is written like this. Y is equal to, you'll notice the A value, which shows up in all three forms. That's always the same. They have X minus H. And the H and the K in these, they actually refer to the um, X and Y values of the vertex. Okay. So let's keep going through this little note. This form is useful in determining the ver vertex or, ah, so the H value here, the H value is equal to the X value of the vertex, okay, which is also known as the axis of symmetry, okay, which we have done in factor form before. So I'm just going to call it the AOS in this case. And the K value is actually equal to the Y value of the vertex. And I know we don't usually write coordinates like that. When we think of a coordinate of a vertex, you have the X value and then you have the Y value. I just put that little V there so we know that that's a specific coordinate that refers to the vertex, okay? And the Y coordinate, that's usually known for a max or min value, okay? So that's what would be important. So the axis of symmetry or I'm gonna say max or min, okay? It depends which way a parabola opens. If it opens upwards, then the y value of the vertex is considered a minimum. And if it opens downwards, then the y value of the vertex is considered a maximum. In other words, that's the highest or lowest point that it'll go to. Um, the other note that it says here is, but can also help in accurately graphing parabolas using the vertex, and then you use stretches or compressions from the a value, okay? Um, they sometimes have, a an algorithm for it, they'll call it like the step method. So this one will probably be dependent on your teacher. They may have a couple different answers for this. Um, I'll write in step method because that's kind of common for graphing a parabola. And the reason it's good using a step method, uh, method is once you get the vertex, you can go over one, up one symmetrically, over two, and then you square two, you go up four. And this is what they kind of mean by the step method. They, and there's a couple different ways of describing it. But it's easy because once you have the vertex, you can kind of expand from there, okay? Um, the next set here says the values of blank and blank and blank represent transformations applied to the graph of f at x. Um, okay, so the values of h, okay, values of the h value, the yeah, value of the k, and the value of the a represent transformations applied to the graph of f at x, um, and all they're talking about is the original quadratic, which is just f at x is equal to x squared. So whenever we're doing graphing of a quadratic, we're always actually kind of referencing a quadratic whoops, that has a um, vertex at the origin, and it goes up using the same method. It goes over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, over 3, up 9. Okay, so that's the, this would be the form of y equals x squared. And we can always just actually jump over onto Desmos here. Let's bring that up. We're usually referring to y is equal to x squared. This is the most common form, okay? Uh, sorry, I shouldn't say it's the most common form, but this is our base form of a quadratic. And what I'll do here is we'll also show up, we'll duplicate it and make a table so you can see the major points too, because these are really helpful in understanding the base parabola. This is what we're talking about, over one, up one, and then your your origin is where the vertex is, okay? Um, a lot of times they'll call this one the parent graph. So I assume that's what they're getting at, called the blank graph of a quadratic function. This is called the, the parent or the original one. Daddy? Yeah, honey. Um, okay, transformations involve reflections in the blank and blank 
and translations. Okay, so oh, don't touch that. Okay. transformations involve reflections. Reflections have to do with um, instead of opening upwards, which is our most common parabola, they'll usually get reflected on the x um, on the x axis, and that's when the a value is equal to negative one. So if a is a negative, okay, negative, it's reflected on x axis. And we're kind of running out of room already, um, but it kind of looks. The idea is that. Once it's a negative value, instead of going upwards, it does everything the exact same, but instead it's facing downwards. And then we talked about opening upwards and downwards. Um, so transfer involve reflections in the x axis. Uh, and they, they might talk about third and fourth quadrant. I'm not sure where they have two here. I'll have to think on that. Um, and translations, blank, 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 and blank. They look like for, from very specific words, I get the feeling. But translations actually have to do with your h and your k value, okay? And what we'll do is we'll do a quick demo of this because it'll be much easier to see. So here's our original one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write this y is equal to a bracket x minus h squared plus k. And I'm gonna make a couple sliders, okay? And what's neat about this, if I can put the h to zero, you'll notice that the vertex kind of moves. Oh, that's the a value, sorry. And move right back down there. And if I change the A value here, I'll zoom out a little. You notice when it flips to negative, it goes downwards. It's now flipped on that X axis, okay? So that's an important thing to note there. Let's see if I can pause it right at one. Oh my gosh, I was lucky. The H values on the other hand, as they move to the right, you'll see that what it does is it moves the vertex, but not just the vertex, but the entire parabola horizontally, okay? Now, the one note we got to make sure of is the H value, it does say 5.16 here. And if we take a look at this, that says 5.16. But when you go to plug it into this quadratic, okay, it'll be X minus 5.16. Um, and that's just because of the negative value in the equation. Okay, so just keep that part in mind. Let's see if I can stop this at zero. Ooh, not bad. I missed it. Um, and then finally... <laughs> There's the K value. And the K value will move it vertically. It'll take the vertex and take it up and down. Same concept as the uh, horizontal one. It goes up and down. Hey, mommy's calling you. Go check her out, okay? Go. So all three of these do different things. And tactically, they can, um, it doesn't have to be just one of the transformations. For instance, you can have all of these going at the same time and you can get all kinds of different looking parabolas, okay? Now, obviously, this is a slider. This is not how we would be working with our math. We can get some really different answers as you go through things here, okay? So we'll see if I can kind of stop it and bring it back to the norm here. Okay, so when we're talking about translations of quadratics, we're talking about getting different values for the H, the K, and the A value. And once you get a hang of these major values, then the rest of it comes relatively easily from there, okay? Um, let's jump back to that other page here. So I'm not sure the four words they want there, um, but that's what happens. The H value moves the vertex, the K value moves the Y value of the vertex, and your translations, you go all around the, the four different quadrants. Um, you may have to ask your teacher what specific words they want for that um, line there. And finally, we can use these values to create a blank and a blank and graph the parabola without the use of technology. Well, we can get the vertex, we can get the vertex for it, and we can use the step method to graph it, okay? I think they're looking for very specific language here, but the general idea is all of this information I've shown you, plus um, the little demo we did here on Desmos, okay? Um, okay, well, with that being said, um, let's do a quick pause. Let's um, continue through here. So uh, we're gonna look at this little um, table they've built at the bottom here. We have y is equal to ax. So instead of focusing on all three at the same time, which we have in this um, example here, we're just gonna focus on what the a can do, okay? So when the a value is greater than one, the graph is vertically, um, and they'll use the term stretched here, okay? And I'll try to fit it in, but S-T-R-C-H-E-D. They're stretched. And all that means is compared to the original one, think of it like it is an elastic band being pulled upwards. It's going to be much thinner looking than the original parent one that we use, okay? 
Um, and it's stretched by a factor of a. Whatever a is, we multiply these coordinates, the y values by them, and that's how much vertically it'll be stretched by. When a is between 0 and 1, then we say it's compressed. Okay? And all that means, is I'll kind of put in blue, is it's going to be much wider looking than the one we're working with, okay? That original one. So that's what a compressed parabola will look like. And it'll say by a factor of 1 over a. Yeah. When a is negative, the graph is reflected on the x-axis, which is something that we had talked about. Okay? I'll draw your attention to it over here. It's already, we already talked about being reflected, so now it's going to open downwards. And the graph of y equals ax squared is a vertical blank or blank. Is a vertical stretch or compression? I'm, we've already used those two words. I'm going to go on a limb and say it's those two stretch or compression. But there might be more specific language, again, that your teacher's looking for in that part, okay? Um, let's go up down to k here. So k has to do with vertical translations. When the k value is greater than zero, the graph is translated k units, we're going to say up. And the other one that means is the, the vertex itself is going to move upward. So if this was our original, the new one goes up here, however many k units there were. So if, it's, if k is equal to two, then the vertex goes up two units. When k is Less than zero, then the vertex is moved downwards from the original. When we talk about the original function, we're always referring to this black one we have here, y is equal to x squared, okay? The graph of y equals x squared plus k and y equals x squared minus k are vertical, and this term is usually known as translations. Translations, okay? Um, and I guess what they're doing here is they're representing your x values here, so your x value, um, and then what this is is your y value plus k. They're showing like a mapping. Oh, good, they have mapping rule. I didn't look at that problem. Some things they call it now mapping notation. Um, in this one here, your x value stays the same, but you do a times y, okay, to get that value. To get your k value, it's y plus k. And then finally, the last one is h, which is your horizontal translation. So the letter kind of helps out a little in remembering. Now, the difference here is when h is greater than zero, it's, grant, it's translated h units. Now, that's a tricky part I was showing you before, where in the equation, this negative can sometimes be misleading. If it says x minus 2, that actually means the h value is equal to positive 2. Okay, And if it's positive 2, we technically move it to the right. But I don't know if your teacher will want you to pull the value out or refer to it the way it's written in the bracket. So you'll have to clarify that with them. When the h value is negative, it moves to the left, but when it's negative in the brackets, it'll actually say positive 2, okay? So it can be a little tricky. So just um, get a feel for what your teacher's looking for. Are they looking for its value in the equation or outside when you pull the value out of the equation? Re oh, look, here we go. Remember the sign switches? Remember to switch sign to determine the h value. Okay, so I think they're looking for it outside of it. They want you to pull the h value out, which means if the h value is positive, it goes right and left this way. Um, here we take x and we subtract the h value is usually a, a good way to put it. Technically you can add it. Again, get a feel for what your teacher's looking for. Here's the y value here. Depending if you're pulling the h value out, then this would become um, addition. But if you're just looking for the h value that's within the brackets, you subtract the h. The graph of y equals x minus h and y equals x plus h are horizontal. And again, that word translations comes into effect, okay? Um, all right.